Hi brothers and sisters. Um, thought we'd take a look at that spark in scriptures that we don't quite realize is really there. Um, and this is actually going to be in context with those jars, those female jars, um, that we said are actually are cut out to look like gemstones. And it's distinct in this study. It looks like the jars that are cut out to hold the living water are red. They are literally red jars because of the spark that we see connected to this terminology here that we're going to take a look at. This will probably be a very short video. I can't see it being all that long. I don't have a whole lot of information. I've got nothing pulled up to really go along with it. Just what I've written in my notes here. Um, so, jar, spark, and yah. These three terms are actually going to be connected. Uh, jah, or yah, however you'd like to say it. But uh, the, the word here we're going to take a look at is Strong's Hebrew 3537. So if you want to go in and pull that up for yourself. It's kad, K-A-D. Uh, it's a jar. Uh, noun is feminine. Uh, it also means a bowl, a pitcher, pitchers, barrel, and it's from an unused root meaning to deepen uh, properly, a pail, but generally of earthenware, a jar for domestic purposes, a barrel, a pitcher, such as for holding water. That's what you're looking at. So let's just look at that word cad, okay? Because in my studies I kept coming across cad cod as well. And because I knew what CAD meant, it just kept coming up in my brain. Okay, well then there's got to be a connection between these two. CAD and CAD COD because it says CAD COD derived from CAD. Um, so the strong Hebrews number for that, CAD COD, which is K-A-D, K-O-D, is Hebrews number 3539. Uh, and it's a precious stone is its meaning. Perhaps a ruby. Oh, look at that. A precious stone, such as those stones that we saw being offered up on the corners, the four corners. Now I'm starting to think it was the four corners of the globe as well. Uh, when you widen your perimeter on your story here, um, or your parameters on this story. But in Lamentations 4, 1, uh, we saw those sacred stones, those precious stones, they were actually being offered up as a blood libation. And uh, they, they were supposed to be a water libation. No death involved. All right. So the first thing this did was to impute death into the law. That's the first thing the sons of Zion, the sons of God, did when they murdered these daughters. So we see a blood libation. It's interesting that this stone cad cod links us to the jar that holds the water but this cad cod means a ruby or perhaps another red colored stone not necessarily a ruby it says um but it's from the same as cad look at that jar which takes us back to that word jar which is a feminine that was to hold your water uh, instead they end up holding a blood libation these uh, jars gets, they get poured out of blood libation. And uh, if you look up blood if you look up a water libation, it's usually offered um, as um, a prayer unto God to say, please bless our crops and give us the rain that we need to, pro to be prosperous. Well, instead of offering up a water libation, they offered up a blood libation and murdered these women, these precious sacred holy ones of God who was holding the law of heaven in their mouth. It looks like they did it on every corner of the streets. Uh, so it was uh, very much ritualistic in its mannerism. When you think of the libation, it's, it's ritual. Um, and at the corner with blood, it was, it was very much ritual going on here. And uh, it was empowering this, this, um, God that they had made a covenant with, which was, a, it appears to be some kind of a blood God. Uh, now, I was looking up gods in old um, Egypt, 
And the closest one, I believe, I, and again, I didn't look the name up, I think it's Shinzu, and I'll post a link below, but it's very close uh, to all the things that they teach us um, concerning the blood of Christ. Well, we know from our studies and from what we've come to understand is that he was crucified under Old Testament law because he would not walk the Torah. Um, and when I say he was crucified under Old Testament law, what I mean is he was crucified under Roman law because he would not walk the Torah law. Okay, that's how the Jews did it. He would not uphold their religious laws of the Torah that the men have wrote into there. And the proof is is some of them they have actually removed because they found it was hurting the community. One of them was the law of bitter waters. That's amazing. You find that in Numbers chapter 5 or Numbers chapter 11. I can't remember now. The law of bitter waters. Well, now, if they came from God, what right did they have to remove that law? Please explain that to me. Because somebody knew they had wrote it in there along with some of the other ones. And uh, according to uh, what I understand, Christ was crucified because he wouldn't walk the Torah law. He was crucified, yes, under Roman law. Because the Jews couldn't crucify him under their own law. But he was crucified because he would not walk the Torah law. He walked her law. Which is what he was testifying to. It is Proverbs 1, chapter 1. We'll just look at it. Even though we've looked at it before. But I think it's really worth, worth the emphasis. Um, because we don't, we don't remember. We don't hearken. We don't listen. What does it say? Just looking for the the, the verse that I need. So it says, My son, this is verse 8, Proverbs 1, verse 8. My son, hear the instructions of thy father. It means the father is to walk in the mother's law. To have an instruction means he's walking. He's walking in her law. It is the father that is to show those instructions by living that law. And so that's what Christ was doing. He was living those laws, which you find in Isaiah 58, and you find them in Ezekiel 18 in part, so far. Um, instructions of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. He was the only begotten son of God, the virgin daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, Mary. And she knew the laws. And she gave them to her son. She taught him. She, up, she brought him up in this law. And he then walked it. And because he would not walk the harlot's law, because we know they came to exalt the harlot in their heart, Isaiah 47, no one sees me. I will never be widowless. I will never be childless. They're always going to gobble up these laws. And as long as I go along with it, Nothing will ever change. We'll, we'll die in these, these laws is what we're going to do. These man-made laws. And, but Christ didn't. But it got him crucified because he walked in her laws. And he was showing the instructions by doing that as a father in, in a way. Um, so he walked like the father ought to have walked. Uh, but these fathers in the very beginning didn't want to walk in her law and so you see them in lamentations for as the sons of god uh sons of zion uh and what were they they were offering up a blood libation what does uh leviticus i forget the chapter um is it 16 17 i i honestly can't remember it says life is in the blood well blood is 92 percent water your waters are called living waters because they come from the living God. The living God was the rock that you find in Deuteronomy 32 where she says, you forgot the rock that begat you and writhed in pain to bring you forth. And from that rock flows your living water as we see Moses striking that rock to bring forth the water which we knew by the actions eventually that they were actually going to cast her down all right and they did do that so here they have a blood libation this is what's going on here that we see so 
this is the connection, I believe, between your CAD, your jar, feminine, and your CAD cod, why those two are connected. And that your CAD cod is a precious ruby stone. God says in Isaiah 54, I'll make your pinnacles of rubies. And when you look that word pinnacles up, it actually means, I think it does. Maybe I got the wrong word. But there's a word in there. It means your son. Your son, S-U-N, of red, a red son. We don't have a red son right now. But um, anyway, it, it does say, it's the same as CAD. And... Um, it's a precious stone, perhaps a ruby, from sparkle. Spark. Sparkle. So we're coming up with spark there. And again, I got Isaiah, it's Isaiah 54, 12, pinnacles of ruby. Also means shoot or rush down of hawk, star, etc. Also of an attacking force. That's strange. I'm going to look deeper into that. I may put a video up. Once I get a deeper understanding of exactly what's going on here, um, it may be future, such as that study that we just did on the day of the Lord in Joel 2. Uh, this may be your attacking force, the daughters of Zion returning back to take what rightfully belongs to, their, to them. So from the same as Cad, in the sense of striking fire, from a metal forged, a sparkling gem, probably the ruby, the agate. So guess where that took me from because we're looking at a spark uh, striking fire from metal forge it actually took me to a meaning of God Yah Jah who rides the heavens and Jah is gave in that passage in Psalm 68 where we see the congregation of the Lord which is this uh, congregation of women uh, that we link to Isaiah 14 where we know the congregation of the Lord met in the north. And so we identified that congregation as feminine. This was probably the oat cast that no man sought a covenant with. And um, that would be this presence of God uh, known as the daughter of Zion that no man sought a covenant with. And he dealt treacherously with her. And yet it states that Yah ro rode um, the heavens. Um, I believe you also get that in Psalm 18, which is a repeat chapter from, I think, a chapter in 1 Samuel. Um, but let's look at it. Let's look at this term and see where it actually connects us to. So it's 3050 is your number, 3050, Yah, Yah. Uh, it's strong Hebrew. It's the name of God of Israel, and it's contracted from Yahweh. So you have Yah, Y, H. That H is your breath. That would be your daughter, your feminine. And it means flame of fire from Yah. And it occurs, I believe, um, I didn't put how many times it occurs. But I know it occurs in... Songs 8.6, but it does not give Yah as the definition until you go into 30.50 and then you find it there. And this is what it states in Song of Songs 8.6. Set me as a seal over your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy as unrelenting as she all. It's, watch this, sparks are fiery flames, the fiercest blaze of all. Oh, what's going on there? What's going on there? Yah is jealous, is a jealous God. Yah seems to be linked to Cad Cod, the precious stone, which is then linked to Cad, the jar that held the water. All right. These all see all these terms seems to be linked. Uh, Yah, the Lord, contraction from Jehovah in meaning the same. Yah, the sacred name. Yah, the Lord, most venomous. Compare the names in I A H or J A H. Now I was looking at I A H in some strange passages. 
And I'm always leery to look at the occult world, even though the Lord says, Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, I, I've, I have this feeling that if I looked at the key of Solomon, I might find some connection. I'm very hesitant to do so. I just, I don't, I don't like to dabble in that stuff. I don't like to even look at it. And yet, when I looked it up in the Wikipedia, there seemed to be some indication um, that this, this name is definitely in the occult world. So there is a connection there somewhere. And in Isaiah 31 verse 9, Their rock, stronghold, will pass away for fear, and their princess will panic at the sight of the battle standard. What's this battle standard, I wonder, declares the Lord, whose fires, look at that, is in Zion, and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. So it does look like we're looking at the most venomous God here, who is somehow connected to Cadcod, that precious ruby stone, like a spark, and this invading, striking force which is then linked to Cad, the jar that held the living waters. All right? So, I, I don't know. Did I finish my thought on blood? 92% of our blood is water. The other 8% is made up of the various components that goes into blood. But you would not have blood flowing through your veins without that 92% water that gives you life. <laughs> Um, which is likened to our words we know it comes from your wife. Proverbs 5 tells us this. Uh, Song of Songs 4.12 tells us this. And then it also says it flows from Lebanon. We looked at Lebanon, which was where the house, the congregation of the north met. The house in the forest of Lebanon. We link these all together. I may post these studies under here again because they are important to understand what was going on. But again... This has got to be connected to Yah, Isaiah 31, 9, and this attacking force of daughters, who is the rod of iron, who can either uh, be a great blessing to you, or they will cut you away, is what it looks like. Um, will panic at the sight of the battle standard, declares the Lord, whose fires is in Zion, and whose furnace is in Jerusalem. So she is so talking about this core group of daughters. Isaiah 10 verse 17 and the light of Israel will become a fire we are told who the light of the world is it is Israel she not he she Israel is the virgin daughter and um, she is promised full restoration for what mankind did to her in her covenant and the light of Israel will become a fire and it's holy one the daughter of Jerusalem, the daughter of Zion. Zion is simply another word for Jerusalem. Um, and it's holy one, a, a flame. Oh, that flame here is going to look red. That's why it says um, in Isaiah 54 verse 12, when you go look the words up, I will make your son of red. So here, it's linking us back to that fiery red sun as the light of the world. Now we said the Shulamite says in Song of Songs 1-6, Look not upon me because the sun has looked upon me, or because I am black, the sun has looked upon me. My mother's son were, was angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard, but my own I have not kept. So we know who the vineyard belongs to. It belongs to her. And here we have a different color sun. We have a red sun. Right? That will now shine the true light upon us. And that light comes from Israel. The daughters of Zion. Uh, as does the water. The light that shone upon her was the false light of Lucifer. The lying theology that made her black. And black is simply an allegory to uh, false theology. And so she, in fact, becomes uh, the spirit, the false spirit upon this earth as we are teaching his man-made lies to our children. And so she says, but my own I have 
neglected. I haven't taught them. But then it takes us to Hosea 2 where God says, I will call her out of the wilderness and I will give her children back to her. I will give her vineyard back to her. She will be teaching them again. But it's interesting that this all links us back to that red sun, to that pinnacle, to the jars, to the gemstones, that color red, wherein she was a blood libation because the sons of God did not want the daughters uh, known as God in covenant. And God says, you, you cast off me. You didn't want me in covenant. And um, she, she states it as definitely a feminine speaking. She says to both Judah and Israel, she says, you cast me off because you didn't want a covenant with me. And uh, I've read verses where she says that, and it's so distinctly female. It is undeniable. Um, but it says, and the light of Israel will become a fire, and its holy one a flame. In a single day. Now, it says a thousand years is as a, a day unto the Lord. So... Are we looking at the millennial reign, maybe? Um, in a single day, it will burn and devour Assyria's thorns and thistles. Now, what did Israel become surrounded by? The Adamic nations known as thorns and thistles. His ground became cursed because why? Because he exalted the harlot in his heart. The wife. The wife that he hearkened to, who he married. He didn't marry the wife of the covenant who he was, he gave his hand to, which caused him in, in heaven to actually perjure himself. And he becomes known as the accuser because he accused the wife of his youth of the real covenant. And yet God says, yet is she the wife of the covenant? She's going to be fully restored back and you will hearken to her laws. Um, so all of these, this study led me to spark. And the reason why this was become so important to me, and you can shut it off at this point if you don't want to hear what I have to say, because it does involve myself, and a dream that I had. And I had the dream, and I posted the video, oh, quite a, quite a, over a year, year and a half ago, back in through my videos, and I'll repost it under here, the link. Uh, where I was instructed to polish a stone. And um, it, I discovered the date the next day uh, because I went on the one of the calendars, Hebrew calendar, I have an app for it. And it was March 28th was the day that I, the night, evening, I had this dream. And when I put that into the calendar, it said um, Nisan 1 was the date that I would have had this dream on. And um, that was in 2017, yeah. It was 2017 that I had that dream, Nissan 1, or it was March 28th, I believe. And I'll post the video uh, that, I stay, that I had this dream in. But anyway, in this dream, I was instructed, I believe, by God. I wasn't shown a form. I, I didn't hear uh, a male or a female ver voice. I just knew I was instructed to take this stone and to polish just the top portion of that stone. And after I had polished it, not a hard polish, a very light polish, uh, it had been set into my stomach, into the far right of my belly. And the only thing I could think of was a birthright, because at that time, I was really studying the birthright of Joseph. And I had come to the conclusion that it had to have belonged to a female, a woman. Birthright. My reasoning, the Spirit had told me that to be so. So I had been looking at this, and then I had this dream where I was instructed to polish this stone, and it had been set into my belly. And then in the next scene, it was healing. It, it had been healing around this stone. And I didn't know what this stone was until the next day when I went through a series of pictures. And all I could come up with was that it was what they called an uncut ruby, is what the stone looked like. It had a, a reddish, purplish, pinkish quality to it. All those three colors was kind of in it. And, uh, you know, your memory can get a little tainted over time. Uh, and yet I went in search of that picture and, and found one that now I, I, I can pick it out. But because I knew I had picked it out that following day with such clarity, um, so I kind of rely on that. 
uh, but I know that the, the color was a combination like that. And um, the closest I could come to it was indeed an uncut ruby. And uh, with the lower half having been set, the unpolished part set in my belly, which was like a half an anchor in its shape, is what it looked like, and uh, in its rough. And um, that was the whole dream. That was the whole dream. And um, so I was quite fascinated, you know, by the gemstones and the color red. It kept coming around because why was it this color? And uh, then when I hit what the sons of God, the sons of Zion did to the precious stones, they were called the sacred ones. I've had other dreams that linked me all to these ideas. Uh, but Lamentations 4.1 really clarified quite a bit for me. And then uh, these words, Cad, Cad Cod, uh, Pinnacles of Ruby, your son of Ruby. Yah is a, a flame of fire. And then we had all these. And so it looked to me as if I had been given a portion of the birthright in some way. And I know that your thigh uh, was also a symbol of the birthright, which led to the womb. You know, and um, in um, uh, Genesis 2.49, uh, the birthright, Abraham tells his um, servant to place his hand under his right thigh and to make a promise that he would find a wife from his own people for his son Isaac. And uh, that has to do with the birthright. And so 249 became a significant number for me, just like Luke 24, 9 and the number 11 became a significant number for me because like a lot of Christians and saints, I was seeing this number, like a lot of non-Christians and saints, they too were seeing it. This number 11 and other numbers as well. So this become a significant number in my search. And, um, and that stone. And so this is, it, it's a spark. It's a symbol of a spark is what it is. So getting that out of all of that context, out of the context there, I had been looking at the Book of Wisdom, as anybody who's been watching my videos know. Um, so, this is what I found in Wisdom 3.7, just in connection to that. So, what does it say? And in the time of their visitation. So, of course, we're looking at the day of the Lord. The visitation, the day of the Lord. They shall shine. Who shall shine? Or we're told it's Israel. That's the daughters of Zion that are going to shine as a light of the world. And the water, there are the light, these daughters of Zion, and run to and fro like, guess what it says here? Sparks among the stubble. They're going to burn it away. This is the creation of a new Eden by uh, the creation that groaneth for the, the, what does it say? For the, um, I forget what it says. Uh, but for the, the, it says the sons of God? No, for the daughters. It's the daughters that's going to create a new Eden. Birth a new Eden. Sons don't birth. Um, this is clearly linked back to Micah. In Micah. And uh, it says none can... Um, protect from these lionesses, not lion, because it has to do again with Ariel. And um, they will run to and fro like sparks. That's your, your new light coming on scene. Brand new sun coming into our, our dimension, our reality. What does God say? I will scroll back the heavens and I will show the truth to you. <laughs> I wonder if that has to do with the revelation of the heavenly battle through revealing it through the planets um, and, and to our physical eyes. So it says the glory of the Lord will physically manifest in this reality for our eyes to bear witness to. Well, the glory is the daughters of Zion, the remnant of Israel. That's what they are, the 144,000. So that's what I believe I may be looking at, a spark. I was gave, I'm one of these that's been gave a spark. Now there's some other daughters out there who may well have had dreams of being given a portion of the spark. The spark of life. 
the new life that, that they're going to create uh, with the visitation. So does that also mean the visitation of the Spirit upon us? We're going to be fully indwelt at that time? Um, I think there's a definite likelihood of it. So Wisdom 3.7 again. And in the time of their visitation they shall shine. The daughters of Zion. This is the, the new red sun. The, new, the real light of the world. And run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations. Who's going to judge? Micah 4.13. Micah 4.13. Daughter Zion, arise and thresh. And Micah 5.1. They struck the judge with a rod upon the cheek is what they did. They cast her down. They didn't want her. And they laid a siege against her. So, Wisdom 3. Again, verse 8, they shall judge the nations and have dominion. Who has promised dominion over the nations? Full queenship restored back to her. Micah 4, 8. Go read it. The first dominion is promised back to daughter of Zion, which is also the judge of the world. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord, which is 136. All right. Now, um, I'm sure there's websites that you can go to that will give you the words in uh, the Apocrypha, um, such as the Book of Wisdom. <clears throat> but I know it to be 136 from my studies, because that is Daughter Zion's number, who is also the Lord. That will shake the dust from off of her. Uh, she will awaken as if one, uh, as if a warrior from strong wine, that means a lion theology that was put to her lips, to keep her drunk and under him and playing the harlot. Uh, and then God says, I hear a familiar spirit as of one that speaketh out of the dust of the earth. So that's the spirit of Israel rising again with the words of the covenant on her tongue. She's holding no guile. Um, so, dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. She's the sovereign Lord. Christ is not the sovereign Lord that they want to teach. It's a man. It is not a man. It is his beloved spirit that he is in covenant with called the Sovereign Lord. And her number is 136. So um, Hebrews 6, 4, 8, 5, to attend, to visit, to muster. A point. Uh, is, uh, is that like arrival? A lot of us has been getting that word arrival. I know I got it quite a while ago and I've looked at it and I've wrote it under videos. Um, the arrival of what? Of the presence of God upon the earth again established. Greek number 3952, a presence, a coming. Guess what that is? It's para, uh, I can't say the word, parousia, P-A-R-O-U-S-I-A, -A, noun feminine. So this is 3952, Greek. Uh, and it's feminine, but guess what they try to say it is? Even though it's a feminine presence. <laughs> they try to say a presence, a coming, an arrival, advent, especially of the second coming of, they try to say Christ, no, the Messiah. Which is the spirit of the covenant, which was identified as the presence of God upon this earth, known as the daughter of Zion, who is the Messiah. She's the sovereign Lord. She is. That's why presence here. 3952 Greek is feminine. It's the arrival. It's the visitation. Right? The queen will be in her field. Elul is the virgin queen. And uh, I've seen this, this term. Um, what's it? Leo uh, Virgo cusp. And that was that. Um, um, April, uh, August 17th. Uh, August, sorry, 21, 2017. It was indicating the presence of God's arrival as the Queen of Zion. That's what these daughters really are. The arrival of the presence, of the visitation. And what does it say they will do? Again, in Wisdom 3.7, and in that time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks. Among the stubble, 
They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people and their Lord shall reign forever. <laughs> so that's why that's all linked. Psalm 12, 6, the words of the Lord are pure words like silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. So Yah is also found, like I said, in Psalm 68, verse 4 and verse 18, if you want to go look at that. Psalm 14, verse 7, Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores her people, let Israel rejoice and be glad. They got Jacob? Nope, it's Israel. Um, yeah, and one final reference I have here. The ruby. Isaiah 54. Um, I have 11. Oh, afflicted one, storm tossed and not comforted. That's the daughters. It says in, uh, through Jeremiah, uh, 6, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, you have, you have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people. You, what, how does it say? You have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. Saying peace, peace when there is no peace. Why do you think it brings the daughters in? This theology teaches the yoking of women under men. And when you cause this hurt to the daughters, you bring down the nations. And you bring them down to death is what you bring them down to. The way to bring life back on to the nations, the first thing that must be done is the daughters must be healed. If you do not heal the daughters, you will not heal, heal the world. If you heal the daughters, that is the first thing that must be done in order to heal everything else because they're the ones that can heal it. You heal them and they will heal everything else. But they just, they just won't let that honey go that it's all about them as men and being male and that's what makes you godlike, male. No, they tore her down so they could build themselves up and act like they were the gods of this world because God's a he, he, he. No, no, God is not a he, he, he. God does not birth. God did not writhe in pain. He to bring you forth. It was she that did that. And she says, Long time have I held my peace, and now will I go forth. Like a travailing woman, I will destroy and I will devour at once. I will make, um, what does it say? I will make mountains waste. I will dry up your pools. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. These things will I do and not forsake you because I'm your mother. And you rejected me in the beginning. And uh, I come out of peace the first time. But the second time, if you don't receive me, it's not going to be so peaceful for you. It's going to be the rod of iron. It's going to have to be. Um, so that's why we see, oh, afflicted one, storm tossed and not comforted. She's not been comforted. The men's too busy comforting one another. Why? This is something else I want to say. Where do you think the story of narcissist, the God, comes from? He, he gets a, a load of himself <clears throat> in the water. And he just, he, he's so enamored with himself. And he wants to speak to this other man in the water that is, is perfection. And, and he wants to, to um, you know, allure him to him. And, and, and he, it says he, he uh, spurns, is that the right word? He spurns uh, any female pursuers of him. Uh, no, no, you're, like, you're not good enough for me. He is, because he's perfection, you see? And, and that's your idea, narcissistic males. They're so in love with themselves and each other and the idea that God is male, male, male. They, well, they, they ain't got time to heal your hurt. They ain't got time to mess with that. It's all about them. Look how much they've been hurt. Yeah, look at it. And you've been hurt because you have not healed the hurt of the daughter. You heal the hurt of the daughter and she will birth a new creation. But until that time, it's going to be death, death, death is what it's going to be. So Isaiah 54, 11 again. Oh, afflicted one, storm tossed and not comforted. Behold, 
I will set your stones in antimony, and your foundations I will lay in sapphires. Verse 12. Moreover, I will make your battlements of rubies, and your gates of crystals, and your precious, and your entire wall of precious stones. That's a wall back in place, right? That we see um, the breach in the wall. Uh, when um, the Kia David was denied her rightful place, these daughters of Zion, and uh, the Kia Solomon was put in place, that's a harlot spirit that he builds up. And right quickly I drew a picture of what, roughly what my stone, the jackets, the three stones that I spoke on, that I had, I had seen on my jacket that I wore, I just could not understand. But anyway, I just drew a picture of it and what, what the colors of the stone roughly looked like the yellow quite didn't turn out and I used silver for the white I should have just maybe left that just clear um, but that's roughly what um, the, the three colors on my my jacket riding jacket that um, I had on in one of my dreams I had white riding pants on so I'm pretty sure I had a horse um, and uh, I was I was throwing this weapon out into the dark um, in the dream. That was the weapon I had and I was throwing it out into um, the dark and I was hitting things with it. It's a strange little weapon. And it would spin off this whip like and as it would spin f back onto the whip it would contract and go small and then it would just hang at my waist. And uh, I was like I said in that dream I was leaned up against a pile of stone and there was like a spotlight shining down on me so these gemstones in my jacket was all glittery in the dream and quite pretty but it led me to understand um, what the stones of fire was really all about and um, so I had a video on that as well and um, so as as it keeps going on and on the Lord keeps leading me deeper and deeper into you know really understanding the dreams and, and the terms in the Bible um, in a manner that I never thought I would understand and, and to break down some of the riddles, the dark sayings in the scriptures um, that I never thought in a million years I would be able to understand because, you know, it's so true when the Lord says, I choose the weak things of this world to confound the mighty. Well, I'll tell you, the Lord couldn't have found anybody any weaker than me. But in that I have been so greatly blessed to be able to break down, I feel, so many of the riddles that, that was in scriptures and to share and to be able to share them with anybody who, like me, wanted to know these, these deeper riddles and, and to really understand uh, the truth that you really feel in your heart just simply was not being taught to us. And now you realize, as a woman in particularly, and the men ought to realize then, that if these daughters are coming back into existence, and the sons of God are going to come back into existence as well. That's what this ought to be showing us and telling us. And you should be opening your hearts to these daughters who are identified as the spark among the stubble. Um, so um, they bring the light to the world is what they're going to do. And um, I'm looking for the heavens to scroll back pretty soon. Um, I know I, I used to think we weren't going to be here for that because I believe that, that you know, we were going to be gone is what I, I believe. Now I don't, don't look at it the same way. Um, but um, is it possible we're going to see some things that we never thought we'd ever bear witness to? Uh, but anyway, there's the video on the spark, the jar, and Yah that rides the heavens. So, I thank you for sharing these studies with me. I really appreciate you coming along. And, and um, I'm sorry if I get offensive and angry at times. It's just, it's just the way I am. I apologize if I upset you. But at the same time, it, it's really something that the Lord has placed upon my heart to look for the truths. And, and sometimes when I discover those truths for myself as a woman and I look around and I see what they've put women through, it does, it does upset me. It does make me angry because 
I have this burden upon me and I've had it upon me since I was a child because of these teachings. And I've carried it through my life and I feel that it did tear me down. And I feel it is the spirit now that is building me up. And um, I love her for it. I love my mother for it. I love my father for walking in her laws. I love the son for walking in the mother's laws and showing that to us. And um, it's just really great to be a part of it. And so I thank you again for taking the time to watch the videos and to try to understand the theology. Like I said, I don't have it 100%. Uh, we're pretty much building it from the ground up here, trying to understand things that we've never been taught. Um, so thanks. Pray the Lord bless you with an abundance of truth. And I hope you all have a really good evening. And thanks again.